There are 16,513 unaccompanied minors right now in this country. Stephen Miller, former senior advisor to the President of the United States, speech writing, architect of a lot of the immigration policy, joins us now. Stephen, did you let little kids die? What Joe Biden said at that press conference is a detestable lie. It's not just a smear against President Trump. It's a smear against the patriotic border agents who save the lives, who rescue, who rescue unaccompanied minors and get them safely back home. That was our policy. If you came here as, say, a 15-year-old from Honduras and Border Patrol apprehended you, they would then process you, put you on a chartered flight, paid for by the U.S. government, send you back to your home country, meet up with social services in Honduras, work with our State Department to get you back with your own family. Joe Biden is separating these families, stranding them in the United States, and sending the message not just to Central America, Brian, mm -hmm. but to the whole world that if you split off your family, if you send someone here, 17 or younger, alone, they will stay here for life. Stephen, what's so amazing is I'm not, I'm not sure he knows his own policy. He was asked in the scenario, would right. you send that child home if their mom sent him here because America was open? He goes, no, if their mom was there, I'd fly him home. That's not the policy. You come here, you get to stay. He's got to tell Jen Psaki that. They show up with a note in their pocket, they get to stay. And since when, Stephen, are you allowed just to keep the press out of these facilities? Let them into one that looks sanitized. Is that allowed? No. So, a couple of things there. N number one, his administration, in writing, terminated the reunification policy we had in place to send unaccompanied minors back to their home countries, wherever they may come from. And that's why last year we had record low numbers of unaccompanied minors in custody, because we weren't releasing them. He terminated that policy in writing. That's not in dispute. I guess he doesn't know, or his staff is lying to him so that he then can mislead the country. As for access to facilities, his answer, that he'll give people access once his mystical plan is in place, this plan that no one's ever heard of, that no one knows what's in it, no one knows what it's going to do, isn't transparency. It's a cover-up. You're saying, unless and until I am ready, you won't get to see what's going on. They, he, I cannot believe the media would go along with that. I know, and I can't believe it. You said you're going to be transparent. You're going to say, let us into the facility. He goes, yeah, I just don't know when. Why is that allowed? Real quick, he says that you guys took down all the facilities that allowed you to, to store these people there and give them the accommodations they deserve. Did you guys take down the infrastructure? No, far from it. We built a safe, orderly, humane infrastructure to accomplish the end goal of border security, which is orderly return and removal to the place you come from. We didn't need surge facilities to hold tens, hundreds of thousands of people with the way that we're going, because we had a process for returning them, be it to Mexico, Central America, or elsewhere. He dismantled that process, invited the surge, and now he has nowhere to put them. He wants to talk about his $1.9 trillion. He wants to talk about $1,400 in everyone's pocket, but those are not the issues. The issues are the immigration story and also voter. H.R. 1. And what's happening in a lot of states is they're tightening up their rules when it comes to uh, signature verification and just uh, identification, maybe a picture ID. That's what's happening in Georgia. It was chronicled and listed by some as racist. Here is the newest senator, Senator Warnock, talking about what's happening in Georgia, where they're going to give you four days now for early voting and ask for a reason when it comes to absentee voting and ask for ID. Listen to what Senator Warnock says. They are using the lie about voter fraud as a pretext for voter suppression. This is Jim Crow redux in new clothes. There is no reason for this. What we saw was black voters all across the country standing up, other voters of color, young people, women, students, and they made a difference in the election. Is this Jim Crow redux and is H.R. 1 going to purify the system? You know, it's so insulting to every citizen of this country to say that it's a civil rights violation to ask somebody for an ID to vote. You need an ID in this country to rent a car, to cash a check, depending on your age, to buy liquor. 
for the sacred franchise, the idea that we cannot have a simple identity confirmation request. By the way, that's even more important now that Biden's letting in hundreds of thousands of people, unvetted, unchecked, unauthorized. How do we make sure they're not going to be voting in our next election? You do that with voter ID. It's suspicious that Democrats suddenly decided right. that voter ID violates civil rights. I think it's because they want people who aren't citizens voting in our elections. Those right-wing states uh, called California, Virginia, and Nevada right. all require a photo ID and social security number. I want you to hear what Governor Kemp just said on this channel about that accusation that it's un-American and Jim Crow redux. Listen. He obviously doesn't realize what's in the final version of the Georgia bill. He's probably been reading uh, things on Twitter from people that are fundraising, saying that we're restricting or limiting in Georgia, and that's not the case. We're securing the vote. I think most people want that, whether they're Democrat, Republican, or somewhere in between. Everybody wants to have confidence in the election. Steve, this is very important because states should be the, the state's rights thing is in the Constitution. If you're going to federalize elections, that's, that's not going to stand up to a constitutional test. But if H.R. 1 passes, that's exactly what will happen. And that's what they're debating on the Senate floor today. Final thought? This is not a partisan issue. Every citizen has the right to have their franchise protected, to make sure their vote isn't canceled out by someone who's not authorized to vote. Voter ID is just plain, old-fashioned common sense. And I, like most Americans, am tired of the bogus racism allegations that are used to block basic reforms to protect voter integrity. And signature verification protects yes. your vote, too. Same exactly. thing in Colorado. They have signature verification. They throw out of one out of every 112 ballots. I'm pretty sure that's bright blue. Uh, Stephen Miller, I think your point's taken. I can tell you're fired up. And even though it ended at 2 o'clock, you had to stay calm until 7. <laughs> and I appreciate yes. the composure I you displayed. I held it in for you, Brian. All right. Okay. Appreciate it. Stephen Miller, thank you very thank much. You.